Well, Dr. Ken here with part two. So this is capacitance in an AC circuit. And this circuit that you see before you probably reminds you of some stuff that you did in DC because this is where this comes from. You can see here a battery 10 volts through a resistor of 10 ohms. And if we close the circuit, the current will start out very high. The voltage will be very low. The current will eventually drop off, but the voltage across the capacitor will increase. So it's what we call a, the capacitor's time constants. So you can see here that the same thing represented. If the switch closes at this point in time, the current is very high, but drains away as the capacitor charges. And the voltage does the exact inverse. It's very low when you first turn the supply on, but charges up and climbs higher as the capacitor charges up. So when a capacitor is first connected to a DC voltage, the charge current immediately rises to its maximum value, while the voltage across the capacitor starts at zero. So this transfer this charging up of the capacitor and the supply of current all happens very, very quickly. It's all in nanoseconds. So they, we end up with this thing called a phase shift between the current and the voltage. And I'll explain a little bit more about why that happens shortly. But this is what happens. We end up with this phase difference for capacitors at 90 degrees. So because the energy in the capacitor is being stored and released as an electrostatic charge, the actual current ends up leading the voltage. So you can see here as time is moving forward, we have the voltage curve in blue and the current curve in red. You can see they're no longer crossing over at the same point. They're no longer reaching their maximum at the same point. So the current is reaching its maximum well before the voltage reaches its maximum. That's because the capacitor is feeding current back into the circuit which it was, from which it was stored in the previous cycle. And because it's stored energy in the previous cycle and now feeds it into this cycle, we have the current is being shifted effectively by 90 degrees. So the big thing you need to get from this slide is in a purely capacitive circuit, and most capacitors are pretty pure by the way, we get this 90 degrees phase shift between current and voltage. So the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees in a purely capacitive AC circuit. On the right hand side you can see how we would draw this as a phasor diagram with voltage as our reference on the horizontal and remembering phasor diagrams rotate anti-clockwise, then the current has to be vertical because it is leading the voltage by 90 degrees. So we're no longer in Kansas anymore. So things are very different. So why do capacitors cause this shift? Capacitors store energy electrostatically. So there's an electrolyte, the electrolyte charges up and then discharges again, but it does it in the same direction. So energy is stored electrostatically, the stored energy gets stored and released, but it gets stored and released back in the same direction. That's why you get this additive effect of the current. The voltage or the current that was stored in the previous cycle is being fed back in in this cycle, causing a 90 degree shift. Then it stores current in the opposite direction, in the negative direction, and feeds that current back in. So both sides of the cycle, both positive and negative, you can see here drawn on these capacitors. The capacitor is storing energy both in the positive half of the cycle and the negative half of the cycle, and then feeding it back in. So it, it stores it up for a quarter of a cycle, then discharges it back the next quarter. Stores it up negatively for a quarter of a cycle, 
stores it back again or replaces it back again on the fourth quarter. So you've got this store release, store release happening twice within one cycle. Because it's a capacitor and the way capacitors work, they store and release the energy in the same direction, creating this additive effect of creating a 90 degree shift where the current ends up leading the voltage.